Hey everybody, welcome back to World History Class. My name is Mr. Finn, as you can see. Uh, today, uh, we are going to be looking at ancient Samaria and figuring out all of the new things that people are starting to put in place uh, with this civilization. We talked about it last class. Today, we look at some of the firsts uh, that happened in this new civilization. A couple of definitions for you today. Go ahead and pause the video, and you can write those down. Perfect. Uh, and those are some of the things that we're going to go over. So let's, let's get into it. All right. We are talking about Sumeria. Ancient Sumeria is what it is called. If you remember the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers, uh, made up this area where there was fresh water. We had started to domesticate animals. Uh, we had crops and agriculture. And this is going to be the first civilization that we talk about, ancient Sumeria. It was made up of one of your definitions, which was city-states. Now, these city-states are called city-states because they act independently of the rest of the area. So, in the United States, for example, we have a government. We have different states, but we all follow the same laws. Um, we're all part of the same country. Whereas in ancient Samaria, each city basically was able to control itself and do what it wanted to do, make its own laws. Uh, and so that's why they're called uh, city-states. And it made, there was eight of them, uh, 12 of them, and they grew from there. And they ended up comprising or making up this civilization of ancient Samaria. So these city-states were independent. They had leaders. Uh, they followed a theocracy, which was one of your terms. A theocracy is when you have a government that actually operates with religious laws. So today, we have separation of church and state, meaning that you can be whatever religion, and your religious laws that you follow in your religion uh, are not part of the United States of America laws. You know, the religious laws that anyone follows in their religion uh, are not part of the United States Constitution or any legal system. But in ancient Samaria, the laws were based on their religion. And these early city-states and this early civilization operated on a certain type of religion that we know as a polytheistic. Polytheistic. What does that mean, do you think? Well, I'm going to tell you. It means it is a religion with many gods. Many. There's a ton of these different gods. And these gods operate... Um, you know, how the sun rises, how the river flows, the flooding, crops, everything. There's all these different gods uh, that make up their religion. And if you lived in one of these ancient city-states, the religious laws would be the real life laws. Like, <laughs> you had to do certain things based on the religion. Uh, if you didn't, you could be penalized by the government. So it's a little bit different than how we do things today. But this is how most of our early civilizations are going to operate. Many of the religions that we're going to talk about uh, earlier in our class are going to be polytheistic religions, meaning that they have many gods, not one god. Now, what else is going on in Samaria? What did it look like? Well, if you walked into a Sumerian city-state, you would probably first notice another one of your definitions. A ziggurat, which is a stepped pyramid, and let me give you an idea of what it looks like. It would be like, kind of like a layered birthday cake. Think about it like that. And it would be made out of mud brick, because that was readily available. They could make mud, it was very hot, they could then dry the mud and then stack it, and they would make their buildings out of these mud brick um, bricks that they would make uh, using the sun to dry them out. And so these stepped pyramids would look like this, and they would be in the center of every Sumerian city-state. So you would notice this, it would be you know, super high, you'd walk in, there would be a marketplace around it, it would be the center of town would be this ziggurat, uh, and that would be the first thing you would notice when you got there. Now, we have Sumerian city-states. We have ziggurats in there. We know that their religious laws uh, are the actual laws that they have to live by. 
Now here are some other things that happen with civilization. Another term for you. Cuneiform is a writing style. It's the first writing style that we have. Uh, cuneiform, the way I'll define it is wedge shaped wedge shaped writing. Now why is writing important? Why do we write? Well, writing is super important, for, especially for civilization. Because if you remember a few videos ago, I was talking about how we have to have writing for record keeping, um, censuses to see how many people live here, how many crops do we have. It is just to tell stories. You start to see the first stories that are put out there, not even just for record keeping, but fictional stories for entertainment. Um, so cuneiform is the first type of writing, and it's wedge-shaped. If you looked at it, just to give you an idea, uh, it would be in blocks on a stone tablet, mud brick, and it would have, basically it would look like triangles and dash marks in different ways. Um, and you would look at it and be like, I don't know what that is. This doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> it looks like a bunch of shapes, which it was. But that was the first form of writing for the ancient Sumerians that we see. Now we also talk a little bit about the next thing we need. So you have a civilization. People have stopped moving. We have a writing system. We have religion popping up. Uh, we are also going to have what was important for last time was our law code. What are the laws? People are starting to live together in close proximity. So we need to know what is allowed, what is not allowed, uh, who is in charge, uh, you know, what are the penalties if you do something that hurts someone. All of this is important to have when we have people coming together and living for the first time. Um, so we saw Hammurabi's law code, and Hammurabi, I saw some great work. You guys did some good research. You found a lot of things that uh, were in Hammurabi's law code, and again, it was very important for civilization to exist, because without a law code, you could do anything you want, and a lot of people might do things that were not good or could maybe hurt other people, and that's why having this law code is super important. So as we see Mesopotamia come up, this is going to be starting to happen around a year. And don't worry about the years right now, we'll get into the years as we go, but for your records and your notes, around 300 BC. And just to give you a brief idea of how our years are going to work as we go, but again, I'll explain it more later, uh, we are coming down to the year, we're trying to get to year zero. So we're at 3000 BC before we get to zero, and then when we get to zero, we're going to start going up. And we're eventually going to go all the way up to, what's the year this year? Everyone's favorite year, 2020, right? 2020 has given us a lot of curveballs, but we are going to be starting, when we get to zero, to go back up to 2020. Um, and so right now, we're at the very start of when people are starting to have civilization in ancient Samaria. We are now going to move into a new area. And this area, when we get to it next class and I start explaining it, is going to be ancient Egypt. I want to make sure you can see that right. Yes, you can. Because here is today's assignment. As we start to look into Egypt, what I always want to have you do is maybe do a little uh, prior knowledge. Do a little research to find out about what we'll be talking about next time. Uh, so what I want you to do with ancient Egypt, and this is an assignment, again, it's early, but we'll start to do more once we get going. I just want to test it out to see how well we're doing. Uh, I want you to look up ancient Egypt. Not today, Egypt, because guess what, everyone? Egypt still exists. It's still a country today. So you cannot put Egypt. You need to put ancient Egypt when you type it in. And I want you to go and look. Look at images. I want you to look at some images, and I want you to give me a brief description of what you see. So, 
just to give you a heads up, if I type in ancient Egypt, probably one of the first things that's going to come up are pyramids, because those are famous in. So what I'll want is a three to five sentence description, just telling me what do you see. So if I type in ancient Egypt and you see pyramids, what do they look like? What color are they? Does it say anything about where they are? Are there people around? What is the image that you're looking at uh, showing you? And that's what I want you to tell me. And let's say, since this is just a start, uh, usually we'll do 10, but today, because I want to just make sure we're on the right page, and so far you guys have been doing great, uh, I want five images. Uh, well, five descriptions of images. So I want you to look up five different pictures of ancient Egypt and tell me what you see in a short three to five sentence description. And that way when we get into Egypt, you're already going to have an idea of what it looks like, what was going on there, maybe do a little research, uh, and that way we'll be good to go. So I'll see you next class. Have a good one.